But I decided to go and see this movie, almost hoping that everyone was right about him and I had such a bad time. Honestly, this movie here is kind of like a bad M. Night Shyamalan movie. 68%, 18%, 8%. There has to be some kind of pattern. Yeah, down? The pattern is down? No, it's something to do with the AIDS. No! Welcome back to Torn Apart, the only place where we tear things apart. <sighs> Today we're talking about five different films and lately there's not that much going on in Hollywood because of the writer's strikes, so we don't get a lot of new releases. September is kind of a weird month. It's in between the summer blockbuster season and Halloween, so the horror season. I went to the cinema looking for something and I couldn't find anything interesting that came from the United States. So weirdly enough I started reading through a lot of different plot synopsises and I found five incredible French films. I mean not all of them are good of course. I'm not sure when these are gonna be released internationally but bring your notepad to the table and write them down if you find them fun and exciting. We're gonna be starting with the Palm d'Or winner of this year. The Innocent, you know that, right? Every single year I try to make a video review of the Palm d'Or winner because often the most interesting movies of the year, for me anyways, they tend to come out from the Cannes Film Festival. And this year the Palm d'Or went to Anatomy of a Fool, Anatomy d'une Chute, directed by Justine Trier. It's the second year in a row that a woman filmmaker has won this award and of course I was quite happy for her, but I was also quite curious because if you look at all the different winners across the years, the Palm door tends to go to movies that are incredible and when I say incredible from a formal perspective so when it comes to the production design when it comes to the editing when it comes to the cinematography even the soundtrack the script and the themes that it's trying to address everything it's basically the package honestly the palm door is often even better than most of the films that get nominated for the Oscars How do you And this year, I was kind of underwhelmed. I'm gonna let you know what the movie is about, just in case you haven't seen it yet, and then we'll go into the breakdown. Sandra, Samuel, and their visually impaired son, Daniel, have been living in a remote mountain location for the past year. When Samuel is found dead outside the house, an investigation for death in suspicious circumstances is launched. Amidst the uncertainty, Sandra is indicted. Was it suicide or homicide? And honestly, there is not that much to say about Anatomy of a Fall. Of course, it's an interesting movie from a thematical perspective because we have that classic almost Akira Kurosawa way of attempting to tell a story from different perspectives and trying to find out where the truth lies and realizing that it's almost impossible to find it and this movie has mostly attracted interest from the audiences mostly because it is depicting a woman and a man and the woman this time around she's the most professionally successful and she's the one who is being destroyed basically by the media for all almost emasculating her husband and basically an entire narrative starts being built on this idea of women destroying the lives of men, of shutting them down and not really allowing them to have their own career and express themselves. And it's something that is quite popular within the current feminist movement and the alt-right discourses when they try basically to victimize men in the dynamics between men and women in contemporary society. But Besides that, the movie doesn't really have anything else to offer. It's a courtroom drama, of course. It's not really shot in an interesting way. I mean, the only things that I found interesting were the shots that were basically prioritizing the point of view of Daniel. A lot of really extreme close-ups showing basically that he's not completely blind and he needs to put things very close to his eyes, for example, to be able to see them correctly. Honestly, this movie would have been way more interesting if it was almost like a three-part 
mini series on Netflix because it has a lot of ups and downs and plot twists that would have been interesting in that specific format. But as a movie, I was sitting there being like, I feel like I've seen this movie before. I feel like I've seen other movies dealing with the same kind of themes and with the same kind of characters as well. And it's a very French movie at the end of the day. So it's possible that the jury of this year was also influenced by French cinema because it is addressing infidelities within a very bourgeois couple, which basically sums up literally 60% of the comedies and dramas that you find here in France. So maybe that's the reason. But honestly, I was shocked that this movie received so much attention. Of course, I didn't give it like a bad score. At the end of the day, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 on Letterboxd. But I would describe it as painfully okay. And you decide whether that's a good thing or not. And now we can start talking about something that got me really excited and the marketing was incredibly bad when it comes to this film and I have no idea how that could happen because it's the new film directed by Michel Gondry who is the incredible director behind movies like Be Kind Rewind which you can see right behind me but also Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Ça va aller. Tu t'en sors bien. Il y a des victoires tellement éclatantes qu'elles n'ont pas besoin de voix off. He hasn't made a French movie in quite a long time and honestly he hasn't made an influential movie in a really long time so I was honestly shocked to go to the cinema and find out that it was directed by him and not know about it like three or four months ago for example it just came out of nowhere so I was skeptical of course because very often when these big directors make a French film the stakes are so much lower the budgets are so much lower and it ends up being quite unremarkable but I'm happy to say that the Le Livre de Solutions aka the book of solutions is incredible i gave it a perfect score and it's the classic michel gondry things of investing in production design having incredibly weird neurotic characters at the center of the story and mostly conveying his passion for filmmaking and it's amazing honestly that michel gondry is still making films like this because we've lost most of the movie directors who tended to work on those subjects if you think about tim burton for example tim burton is one of those directors that we tend to associate with kind of blissful ignorance. He has a very specific look on life and creatures and the weird things that go on in everyday life and he's lost his spark. He doesn't really make those kind of films anymore so I'm incredibly happy when I went to the cinema and witnessed Michel Gondry being a hundred percent if not 200 percent himself and not really giving up on his vision on the film itself. But basically the book of Solutions is about Mark who is a bipolar and paranoid filmmaker who cannot relate seeing his current project picked apart by his producers. With his editor as an accomplice he manages to spirit away the rushes to his aunt's place in Suven to finish the film as he envisions it. Most of the critiques I've seen online about this film had to do with the fact that two only crew members that stay with him throughout the entire process are women and he's a hundred percent psychologically and emotionally abusing them and this is kind of reflected on maybe what's going on in the industry as well and a lot of people found that disgusting they made the good point of saying and I agree as well if those two crew members so the editor and the other person who seems to be kind of like a director's assistant if those two people were men they would have never allowed a filmmaker like that to treat him that way and they would have walked off set very very quickly or at least it would have led to so many screaming matches and maybe even fighting and this has to do with the fact that that women within the filmmaking industry they're kind of like forced to be nicer than everyone else because people are already treating them as in they're not supposed to be there because still the art industry and the filmmaking industry it's a very male oriented industry I didn't really take it as Michel Gondry for example like creating these two characters to kind of like live a weird fantasy of being able to kind of like control women and control your crew members until they basically die of exhaustion I took it as an interesting critique so it really depends on how you feel about it because this is one of those movies that is quite interesting when it comes to representing filmmakers with ADHD with bipolar disorder and showing that there is a way that those people also can have access to working with this, this film industry even though of course this is a really extreme situation because the main character stops taking his medication so he is almost doing it on purpose for the sake of making a very artistic 
artistic film. And you can argue that it's kind of pushing that idea of the tortured artist, which is something that we don't really want to promote anymore in these days. But for me, the good outweighed the bad. And for Pierre Nene, honestly, this is one of his best performances I've ever seen. And I wouldn't be surprised if I was going to put him into the best actors of the year when I'm doing my Oscar videos next year. Next, we're talking about a French filmmaker called Jan Goslan, who has made his new film called Visions. Depuis la dernière fois, des événements importants dans votre vie personnelle. Personne t'aimera comme moi. Rien qui puisse vous perturber ou vous stresser. This is a really exciting filmmaker who's made quite a lot of interesting thrillers. His most recent one is called Boite Noire and he's been loved by the audiences, he's been loved by the critics. I haven't seen Boite Noire yet, but I decided to go and see this movie almost hoping that everyone was right about him and I had such a bad time. Honestly, this movie here is kind of like a bad M. Night Shyamalan movie. If we're gonna die, I want you to know something. I was in a pharmacy a while ago. It was a really good looking pharmacist behind the counter. Really good looking. I went up and I asked where the cough syrup was. I didn't even have a cough. And I almost bought it. Are you joking? It's incredibly filled with cliches. It's one of those movies where it's entirely saved by its cinematography and the soundscape as well. I gave it like 1.5 over 5 stars on Letterboxd and I was clear and said that it was literally just because of the visuals. Let me tell you what it is about so we can actually tear it apart. An experienced airline pilot, Estelle leads a perfect life between long haul flights with her loving protective husband, Guillaume. One day by chance in an airport corridor, she crosses paths with Anna a photographer with whom she had a passionate affair 20 years earlier. Little does Estelle know that this reunion will send her into a nightmare spiral, turning her life upside down. I mean, I started my letterbox review by literally saying, give male directors as much money as possible and enough fame, and at some point in their career, they will make a really pretentious erotic thriller. Extra points if it is starring two women. Extra points if it is actually homophobic. So this is what this movie is about. It's so badly written, the characters, Specifically, they don't really exist outside of the job description and outside of their sexuality as well. Of course, there are a lot of really graphic sexual scenes. There is no female gaze at all in this movie. It really feels like this guy had the chance to make a movie about sexy people and he made a movie about sexy people. And of course, it has the kind of like grittiness of a David Fincher movie where you feel like there is way more incredible things going on under the surface. It kind of reminded me of memento as well especially when it comes to playing with flashbacks and visions of course and partial memory losses but it's not at the same level at all plus let's also say that this is a movie about once again an incredibly bourgeois pretentious rich couple and i honestly don't really care about them like at the end of the day they're living their life completely outside of society there is not a single scene where they go i don't know grocery shopping or talking to their friends nothing it's literally like they're either driving their cars or really expensive bikes around, they're working for their incredibly important job, or they're betraying each other in these incredibly contemporary houses that are in the middle of nowhere with beautiful views. That is basically it. This is the entire movie and it's so incredibly annoying and honestly I had such a bad time. And I was so happy that the movie that I watched right after this was a really funny movie by a director that I really really love whose name is Quentin Dupieux. J'en ai pas rien à foutre. Ça peut partir en sucette à n'importe quel moment là cette histoire. D'accord <rire> I actually have a video on my channel deconstructing his entire career and drawing different parallels in between all of his films. So watch that video maybe in preparation of my review here because you will be able to understand my analysis a little bit more. But basically this movie is about Yannick who gets up and interrupts a play called Le Cocu to take the evening back in his own hand because he's basically having an incredibly bad time. And I actually completely agree with him. The thing when it comes to Quentin Dupieux, his films tend to be half and half when it comes to trying to convey a message, talk about a specific theme, criticize something about the French industry, for example, and being absurdist comedies. And I feel when it comes to Yannick, it's an incredibly funny movie, but it's kind of broken because from a thematical perspective, it is 100% trying to draw a critique 
of the French industry and even though he's specifically talking about plays so French plays in this scenario within the movie itself I'm pretty sure he's talking also about the film industry and I actually agree with this critique basically he's saying that when it comes to the movies that we get with in France nowadays they're all the same they have the same dialogues the same kind of concepts if I just show you like a couple of posters from all the movies especially comedies and dramas that came out this year in France you will see a lot of similarities it is a lot about family issues very often bourgeois as well what here we call bobo parisien or it is incredibly serious social movies about the working class not being able to survive in the current state of things and the struggles with the police for example those are the films that get released here in France and that's mostly why when I watched most of these films that I'm talking about today I was quite surprised because there was way more variety in this single month here than the entire year of release but anyways the film is basically showing Yannick as a terrorist who is taking over and endangering an audience to kind of like impose his own notion of fun and entertainment to everyone else and it's an interesting point of view mostly because Yannick clearly comes from the working class in the way that he talks and everything is actually really interesting how the actor decides to give this performance it feels very genuine it feels very realistic so it's an interesting critique of course coming from the working class when it comes to what is being reflected back at them the movies the plays etc but then Quentin Dupieux actually decides to turn Yannick into a bit of a villain like there is a weird scene where he's almost literally sexually assaulting a couple in the audience he's of course criticizing the entertainment part of the industry where it's completely disconnected from what the people actually want to watch when it comes to originality when it comes to sequels and stuff like that but it is also talking about audiences and talking about critics kind of like hating everything that the entertainment industry has to offer even when it's something original so it's kind of like no one is ever happy and it's impossible to make everyone happy but the problem is that because of the context in France here that is not really true meaning that the audiences and the critics are actually right when it comes to criticizing the French industry if you look at cinema if you look at plays entertainment just in general so I kind of have the feeling that Dupieux was trying to apply what is going on in the United States right now to a French context and it really doesn't work. I gave it a good score. I gave it a four out of five stars on Letterboxd mostly because it's literally like 60 minutes long. You go in, you have a laugh and you go out. But I feel like it was so close to being perfect and to actually say something about the way that the industry works nowadays and it kind of missed something and now we're talking about the most exciting movie that i've seen in the last few weeks and probably the most exciting movie that i've seen in the entire year it's called the animal kingdom aka le règne animal it's literally got a perfect score because i loved it so much si on t'attrape c'est terminé tu seras tout seul tu comprends ça And it's basically an adventure between a father and his son in a world where some humans have started mutating into other animal species. And this is the movie that breaks the rule when it comes to the French industry as I was describing it before. This is one of the most ambitious movies I've seen in probably the last 20 years, especially here in France, because it's a science fiction movie. It's kind of like a mix between Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and the New Mutants and kind of like blending them together and creating like a, the perfect like child of those two movies and that is so entertaining production design is incredible i didn't know we could make such incredible creature designs and special effects here in france especially if you compare it to the garbage that disney has been delivering in the last few months it's honestly insane incredible performances of course by Romain durie for example but the thing that i loved about it it's the script itself because even though it is quite simplistic because it is about people falling sick and family dynamics once again it's never actually cliche there are a couple of scenes for example which could have turned into the classic x-men teen stuff where you expect some things to be happening but actually it was very genuine and that has to do mostly with the casting because the teenagers that are being played in, here in this film are actual teenagers and they behave like actual teenagers and everything makes sense i love also all the critiques of like the french system how they try to control everything and put them into like specific buildings for 
other people not to look at it and for other people to take care of it basically to hide the problem away so that you don't have to think about it it's a classic french thing to do when it comes to how they deal with these kind of social issues if you think about refugees if you think about other minorities for example this is probably the only french film in a really long time that i want to desperately see a sequel for it and honestly that is something that you can apply almost all the time to action movies in the us but it doesn't happen that often when it comes to french films especially if it's not action oriented or if it's not even a horror movie i think the worst part about this movie is probably the fact that the marketing for it is absolute garbage like i had no idea what this was about until i saw a trailer for it and then i was like this looks insane i need to go and seek it out there's nothing going on on youtube no one is talking about it i don't think i've ever seen even a poster going around in the metro stations and stuff like that just to say that these are the kind of films that you should promote if you gave the marketing budget that you gave to the most recent three musketeers or even asterix and obelix to this movie you would have some Thing incredible but unfortunately that's not how it works because as I said in France it's incredibly weird because people criticize the industry for not being original but as soon as there is something that is actually original people don't go watch it and they don't support it what do you want what do you want it's not that simple what it's do you want <laughs> For example, there is a really weird like comedy right now that is making quite a lot of money at the box office and it's the classic stupid French comedy that I told you about before, about the family dynamics, a lot of children and having to deal with all of that kind of stuff. Or there is another film that is about basically an older couple and the woman falling in love with her own stepson and it's a weird pedophilic kind of thing. Like, those are the movies that are actually working right now at the box office here in France instead of something that honestly is original. I really love the way it was shot for example. I really love how it prioritizes movements and how the camera follows all of the different characters and how it evolves as well as the main characters start mutating and they start changing because of the sickness as well. And I really love also the message about animal cruelty and the fact that they were basically not really giving space to the animals to live their own lives and when eventually animals and humans like cross each other's paths it's always in violent ways but mostly because humans can go back home into their own safe space but the animals those safe spaces are being destroyed and they have nowhere else to go back to so there is an interesting thing of exploring like the community behind different animals from different species coming together that's something that in real life it's not possible of course you would never see like a snake being friends with like a bird person for example but within this movie it's actually possible and it's actually really heartwarming and that's why i hope that this movie gets a sequel i would love to see that I would love this movie to get almost a sequel or even a trilogy like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes where these animals, we start caring more about them than the humans themselves. It would be incredible and honestly, go watch it, go seek it out if you can because this movie really blurs the lines in between international movies. It's just a really entertaining movie. Anyways, these are all the films that I wanted to talk about today. Let me know down in the comments if you've seen any of them, if you love them and if you are intrigued by any of them if you like this video don't forget to come back in two weeks where my new video is gonna come out here at the bottom i'm gonna be putting other videos in the same vein that you can find here on my channel in case you want to support me a little bit more and look for more entertaining movies or tv shows to watch anyways don't forget to smash that like button every single like that you drop will go to all the animals out there who are endangered and who deserve our love and protection can i count on you and our understanding as well because we're slowly killing their habitats and destroying the planets just for fun and capitalism so yeah they deserve some love as well i'm patrick and this is torn apart Ta-da-da-da-da, ta da 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 da